Hello and welcome to Ticket Manager's All Access Interview Series, engaging leaders from across the sports marketing spectrum to identify and explore critical issues in the business of sports, entertainment, sponsorship, activation, ticketing, hospitality, and even more. I'm your host, Jim Andrews, and joining me on this episode is Todd Fisher, Executive Vice President, Client Consulting at GMR Marketing. Welcome, Todd. It's great to see you, and, and thanks so much for joining the podcast. Uh, thank you, Jim. Always a pleasure to see you and, and be together. Look forward to the conversation. Yeah, me too. Why don't we just start with an, with an update on, on GMR? It's such a pioneering organization in the area of, of experiential marketing, but I know, you know over the years the company has expanded and diversified into a lot of different areas, particularly into, into your area, consulting with, with many leading brands. So maybe you know begin with with telling us a little bit about that portion of the business that you lead, you know all of the sports and entertainment partnerships that you've been involved in, and also anything else that that may be going on with the firm these days. As you said, GMR has been a pioneer in the industry for forty plus years, and you try not to take it for granted. And at the same time, you want to keep building and and creating a new. And I think that's been a bit of the reputation of GMR is always trying to stay a step ahead of where consumers and where the industry are pointed to as well. And so, as you mentioned, you know, started 40 plus years ago, really in the foundation of experiential. And we could all say that, you know, what experiential even is today <laughs> versus 40 years ago is a very different thing. And yeah. so complementary services have rounded out that mix from digital and creative services to now, you know, data science and how we think about memory making through you know, data and, and insights and start to even create that in a formulaic way. But then, as you said, you know, one of the areas that has grown tremendously over the last decade has been our consulting practice. You know, sports and, and entertainment are at the core of passion points of both B2C as well as B2B opportunities and the clients that we work with. And, you know, constantly have to be on the forefront of being able to advise and lead a blue chip client portfolio around how best to invest their marketing spend, but then also how to optimize it. I mean, we we really spend a lot of time looking at an end-to-end -end solution. And so I think that's one of the beautiful things about the mix of solutions that GMR provides from strategy and planning and consulting all the way through activation, experiential, hospitality. We're not thinking about it through one channel and bringing a singular solution back to a client. We're truly looking at their business in totality. And so, you know, we continue to be uh, always blessed with a great blue chip brand portfolio. And at the same time, you know, uh, want to keep showing up for them and want to continue to to grow uh, both as a business and and pushing the industry, quite frankly, as well. Yeah, no, and and I think sometimes we we all need that push. We'll we'll talk a little bit about that in in just a second too. I'm just curious: is there in in your role there as, as uh, EVP of, of consulting, is there a typical day in the life of of Todd Fisher? I would say the typical day of the life is about variety and diversification, and that's what you know gets me excited every day. Is sure. uh, there isn't a typical day? <laughs> I, I would say you know when I think about the three stakeholder groups that I feel like I service or am responsible for every day. Uh, obviously, it starts with uh, our clients. So, you know, a lot of time spent with top to top senior client conversations around staying at the forefront of their business strategy and then being able to translate that business strategy into partnership strategy and plans as well, both for you know, their brands, their businesses, understanding the competitive landscape, you know, keeping their finger on the pulse and being able to bring trends and insights to them before, you know, crosses their desk from somewhere else. Secondarily, I would say, you know, is our our teams internally, our people are our greatest asset at at GMR and especially in, you know, an agency service type of business. And so our ability to stay connected Nurture, develop, grow people is a huge passion point of mine. And so the ability to put great solutions together cross-functionally, as I spoke about before, takes time and effort to be able to bring teams together, get everybody on the same page, and then have a unified vision of, of how we get to great work. And then the third piece, I would say, captures our industry. Now, our, our industry might mean partners that we're working with, so you know, sponsorship Properties, leagues, teams, et cetera, 
wanting to have great relationships, great working relationships on behalf of our clients, but on, on behalf too of what's forthcoming. You know, within that industry sector then too is new potential clients as well. So, you know, needing to always be out there in the marketplace, having conversations, understanding what people's challenges are that they're facing. Because I think a lot of brands feel like, you know, what they're facing is exclusive to them. And I think one of the things that I enjoy most in my role is connecting the dots between clients of, hey, someone's going through something similar over here. How can I take that learning and experience and help accelerate somebody else's learning curve over there? And just, you know, the experiences that I've been blessed and fortunate to have uh, in my career journey and being able to apply those across different industries, I think is, you know, one of the most fun parts of a day in the life of that I, I get a chance to experience. Yeah, uh, e- easily fills up a day. And you, you you touched on a couple of things there that I think were just was so, so important. I love the the phrase of, of translating business uh, strategies and objectives into partnership strategies, because sometimes I feel that uh, people start with the partnership strategies and, and kind of forget about the business side of things, which doesn't make a lot of sense when you when you say it. But but yeah, I'm sure we've both seen uh, examples of that. And it always is a little bit mind boggling to me. <laughs> And, and the other thing is, though, is that that being a connector, right? And and yeah. uh, you know, for, I think for for anyone that's been in, in in what I'll call the agency sector, those of us who who advise both you know brands and and rights holders properties, that is, I think, you know, an important uh, thing that, that that we all bring to the table is is that experience of knowing what you know what other people are doing and and being able to say, hey, that. We can reference that and, and use it for for somebody else, but um, yeah, that really great stuff. Todd, one of the reasons I really was excited to have you on the podcast is you know you you've had so much experience in in, in so many aspects of our business. I didn't even mention in the intro, you know, you spent uh, uh, many years at, at State Farm leading uh, their partnership program, which which all of our listeners I know are very familiar with all of the things that that they have done uh, and, and that you started there. So based on that, on, on your, your experiences, I just like to throw out a couple of issues that have really been the topic of conversation on, on this podcast and uh, in the industry and at industry conferences and, and just get your take on them. And I want to start, and I've heard you actually speak a lot about this, that's the need for innovation in partnerships and in activations. You know, you've certainly been involved with a lot of innovative concepts, but you know, I think nowadays when we hear that word innovation, it's very easy for our minds to go straight to technology and you know talk about <laughs> AR and VR and mixed reality, DEDs, all that kind of stuff. And and obviously, you know, tech can be great, but is there a chance that we're getting a little bit caught up in sometimes in, in tech for tech's sake and and kind of forgetting a little bit about uh, the engagement piece and how we can be innovative just you know there. Yeah, I, uh, it's such a great question and and one that we could probably do an entire podcast series yeah, exactly. on, uh, given the depth of it. You know, first and foremost, you're, you're right, right? I think in the industry at large, in the business world, when we say innovation, we typically think of technology innovation. We think of, you know, building for the future. And so uh, that is very real and very prevalent, right? We have a, a very tech-centric portfolio of, of clients that you know, fortunate to be on the cutting edge of a- AI and, you know, streaming and, you know, consumer consumption habits and all these things that are driving an innovation narrative within respective businesses. But I think to your point, if we stop there, we're probably doing ourselves a disservice, both as a business, as an industry, and as, you know, individuals to say innovation equals tech and therefore if I'm not in those spaces, maybe I can't innovate. And I, I just, I don't believe in that, right? I think innovation to me is a mindset of doing things differently or trying new things that haven't been done in those spaces before. And so when you kind of expand the definition of that, or maybe apply even a little bit of the definition that's being used in technology and bring it into other parts of our business, it's where you know innovation should be on all of our individual as well as business roadmaps. You know, it's about how are we staying ahead, and you do that by drawing from different points of inspiration. I know you you and I 
share a, a similar passion and a similar background of having taught as well um, in an academic setting. Right. And one of the things that I really encourage students and now I bring into our own practice and, and try to follow myself is looking outside of your current industry to bring ideas back into your industry. And so, so I think, you know, one of the double-edged swords that we have in the sports industry is, you know, we have some of the best publications and outlets and industry reporting sources available that are so important to our industry. And yet, if we stop there, mm -hmm. we are probably, you know, then just resurfacing similar ideas, even if we're borrowing ideas from different parts of the industry. And so where I think true acceleration comes from is if we can step outside of sport or if we can step outside of sponsorship and we can go into other industry sectors, find innovation and bring those in applicable ways back into our own industry. And so that that's one of the things, again, that like gets me excited about what the opportunity is every day, because we can learn from each other. You mentioned you know, the, the word connector. I think by being a student of the industry and by wanting to just be curious and connect in our industry for the sake of learning, not necessarily for the what can you do for me type right. of transactional relationship. I think we all become better. And I think that's you know where where an innovation roadmap starts to uh, adopt from. Yeah, I think that's that's such a great idea. And and just listening to you, you talk about that and learning from other industries, I almost uh, equate that to to travel. Right. I mean, you know, those of us in the U.S., we could spend so much time, you know, visiting 50 states and, and seeing all the great things there are. But when you travel internationally, you just you you pick up ideas from other cultures and other things. Same thing in business, right? When when we when we look at something outside of, of sports and entertainment, it really just does, you know, get the get the synapses firing and, and opening up ideas that we never would have thought of if we hadn't you know, stepped out of the, the tried and true. So no, I think that that's a great analogy, right? I think, you know, ideas are typically about a collection of experiences, mm -hmm. right? You know, rarely is there one path to get to the destination. It's about being able to to draw from different paths to get there. And so, you know, I think an, another very important factor that our industry needs to continue to talk about in the innovation space is diversity of thought, right? And so you know, diversity of thought comes from diverse perspectives, diverse experiences in all ways, shapes and forms. And I you know, am, am proud of what the industry has done, but want us to continue to push in those areas. If we wanna be the most influential business industry in the world that I truly believe sport is, you know, not necessarily just monetarily, but in terms of the influence that it has it around passion and fandom and business influence and cultural influence and all those things, we have to have the best talent and the most diverse talent of any industry out there, or you know, we will lag behind uh, others. And so, you know, I think that's a major focus of our business and where we spend a lot of time recruiting best talent, but best talent from all sorts of, of areas and backgrounds so that we can, you know, become a blend of, you know, perspective and, and how we innovate, how we bring fresh ideas, right? Otherwise, if we just continue to do the same thing, you know, we'd be the GMR of 40 years ago, not the GMR that we are today. So, you know, I hope that continues to be a, a hallmark of our reputation and a hallmark of our success moving forward. Let me switch gears a little bit. One of the things I've been thinking about lately, and maybe it's just the time of year, is, you know, we, we think about activation around around tentpole events, whether it's Super Bowl, NBA All Star, NCAA Final Four, you know the the Olympics, World Cup, U.S. Open, all of, you know many many others. You know, those those events, those those key moments are are so critical to a lot of partnership programs and, and activation programs. I'm wondering if with so much activity now, I mean, the calendar just seems to get more and more more crowded uh, with, with those kinds of opportunities. Is it getting more difficult for, for your clients, for brands to, to sustain the engagement with their fans outside of those event weeks? Because, you know, as, as fans, as consumers, you know, once one event ends, we're kind of on to the next one. I'm wondering about kind of continuity of that engagement. Is that a challenge? I would say, yes, it is more challenging if there is an intentionality behind it. And so I feel like intentionality is is key for me. 
you know, all of these questions become connected. You know, you have to continue to evolve and, and innovate as the industry evolves, right? Every property right now has an aspiration to be a year-round relevant property. And so, you know, what you just named off probably five, 10 years ago weren't the events that they were. When you think about NFL draft, the WNBA draft, ancillary events that have become very prominent events that have filled a calendar, right? So, you know, no longer is it the NFL has two events and Major League Baseball has two events and the WNBA has two events. All of them have 10 events. And so that calendar does fill up, which if we view as an industry as anything less than glass half full, we've probably missed the opportunity, right? There are more opportunities for engagement. There are more opportunities for reach across a platform because you're not talking about just a seasonal window. Now you have to really think about how it plays out over a calendar. Where I think brands have to be really thoughtful in this space because consumers are hopping from one thing to the next is to find and create consistent platforms that work across their portfolio instead of just within one season or one property because people are consuming differently, right? right. You're, you're coming in as an NBA partner, the chance of somebody watching every NBA game start to finish, much less doing that on multiple networks through multiple devices, attending games, but you know, the ecosystem has expanded so, so much. And so you're not going to be able to capture that attention completely and wholly, but you have to really understand consumption habits as to where else, what else are they, is your consumer passionate about? What else are they watching and following? And then how do you bring and bridge some of those things together? You know, I think just in, in the last couple of weeks alone, you know, I, I look at a lot of the crossover work that I would say that has popped within our space of, you know, using a, a, a client like Comcast, you know, during the NCAA tournament, did an amazing campaign and, and really engagement opportunity with Caitlin Clark, but didn't leave that to just the NCAA women's tournament, saw her magnitude and the message being resonant uh, that played across the NCAA men's tournament played across social profiles as well. And so, you know, typically I think somebody historically might've said, Hey, we're going to cut this message, this piece of creative. We think it's only relevant for this audience. And now we're seeing how that, you know, is, is reaching into other areas. Google's doing the same thing in the NBA, WNBA space. They're you know, presenting sponsor of the playoffs right now, but really able to take their message, their cultural influence, their products, into other parts of lifestyle that they understand that that their fan base, their consumer base is interested in. And so that's where, you know, it's NBA and WNBA centric messaging and creative, but it's not just living in those channels. It's able to reach across other things. So that that's where I think you start to see the biggest brands, I would argue to say the best brands are playing across platforms in a way that allows people to understand why they're there, what they stand for, and show up still in a relevant way, but also gain efficiencies by looking at things from a portfolio approach instead of a singular mindset. You also have been a big proponent of integrating purpose into partnerships. And, and you know, I think different people have different perspectives on, 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 that, uh, that, on that concept, but what, what do you see as the key to making sure that purpose is is meaningful. Yeah, it, it it's challenging if you're not thoughtful about it. And so again, I, I go back to kind of in, intentional process, intentional structure to it. For us, it starts with the brand. Of a brand has to really understand what it is, what it stands for, and its role and benefit in society. And so, like to do anything purposeful, it has to be authentic. And so you can't. And we've seen it, right? We've seen it happen. You and I could both point at examples where somebody did try to draft off of something else purposeful going on in the world or a charity or something else like that. And I think consumers are savvier than ever today and expecting to understand the ideals and the values of why those brands are associated and even why properties or or causes are allowing those those brands to partner with them. 
if it's coming from an inauthentic place. And so, you know, I think it starts with, you know, understanding what your brand DNA is and as well as then understanding your purpose that then translates into how you show up, right? So we talk about, you know, activation. Are you adding value to the experience or are you becoming a distraction away from the experience? And so there are ways to do purpose work in a way that is meaningful to consumers and what they're interested in, but also to be additive to experience. And, And that's what I've seen probably change the most. There's a receptivity from fans now that sport in particular, but you know, partnerships in general can add to the fabric of society while still being fun, while still being monetized. And all those things can be true. And real magic happens when those things start to overlap. And so again, like to, to use a real world example, everybody long overdue now wants to talk about women's sports. We've been in the space, have been driving investment, having conversations for, with our clients for years. And a lot of it was about not just showing up because it was a cause or the right thing to do, but what's the right place for those respective brands to make an impact in their business. And so one of the ones that I think we're most proud of that was on the cutting edge of a lot of this momentum is Google. Like Google said, this is important to our audience of being the global brand and leader that we are. We need and want to do things within our own business to create greater equity. And, you know, it wasn't just a surface level, let's go sponsor something and put our name on it. But it went back to how can we have a real meaningful impact and be purposeful about it. And so we did a couple of things and identified the NBA and WNBA audience as a real target for them in several of their product areas. And we were intentional about leading with a WNBA partnership, not just rolling it into an NBA partnership the way a lot of others had done. And so it it really allowed the W and Google to make a statement about the power of the W and the importance of the W versus just a portfolio play within basketball. And then Google said, that's not enough. What else can we do, especially as a change maker partner? And went to broadcast partners, including D- Disney, ESPN, and said, we want to be part of the solution of putting more women's content and games on air. And so as a part of the 25th anniversary of the W, used its investment spend to be able to put more games, put 25 games on air in that first season, which was more than had ever been done. And now has opened up, you know, an entire ecosystem of of further opportunities. And so that, you know, that I think is just an example of, again, when you take a step back and you think about business strategy, translating the partnership strategy, And then when you think about purpose feeding into that, it's less about, again, purpose for the sake of doing something charitable, and it's purpose more in the way of how can your brand show up in a way that means something to your target audience instead of just showing up as a sponsor in traditional ways. You know, Todd, you mentioned before the the idea of 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 bringing in you know diverse viewpoints you know people into the industry who can who, you know can really you know lead change and and kind of be the next generation of of leadership for us and you mentioned that we both you know have, have done a lot in terms of uh, ed- educating and developing mentoring young people people new to the industry and something that I've seen in, in, in again some conversations with with with, with folks who are uh, I think you know have great potential, but, you know, a lot of them are looking and saying, is kind of the sports business, sports marketing, whatever we want to call it, is that a career path that I want to stay on or are there greater opportunities elsewhere? And obviously that's a very personal decision for, for, for all these individuals, but, you know, I, I guess I get a little bit concerned about kind of a, a brain drain when I hear people saying, you know, maybe I want to go in, into other areas. I don't know if you've experienced that, but but what what would you say to encourage kind of young, talented people to kind of stay involved in our business so, so we have those really great, innovative ideas um, that, that we can continue to, to kind of feed off of? You know, I, I think it's our responsibility as we're having conversations with young people to really start to create an understanding and expectation of what the sports business industry is. And I think one of the first things that I I deliver and kind of ground folks in is the sports business industry is business and and big business. 
first. And so, you know, if, if I was to focus on one word within the sports business industry, it would be business. It wouldn't be sport. And so, you know, I think managing expectations with folks of the sophistication, the level of business innovation, the types of skills that are needed to be successful in this industry, hopefully become inspiring where, you know, it, hey, you want to be on the cutting edge of technology, no greater place to do that than sport. You know, you want to be on the front edge of consumer psychology, fan understanding, all that, no greater place to do that than sport. Like you, you can go down the list of you know every industry that they may be interested in the external world probably has a sector within sport. And right. so it's up to us to create exposure to all of those things maybe rather than just still you know allowing folks to see uh some of the surface level stuff hey if i'm going to come into the industry you know what i'm aware of is there's sports teams so i need to work for a sports team like there's so many businesses that are doing amazing things to support the overall sport ecosystem and so you know i, th I think a lot of it is is education a lot of its awareness it as acumen as well like we have to train people to be able to be successful in what now is a cutting edge industry more so than you know maybe where it was 30 years ago and so i think preparing people for that giving them the right skills encouraging them to supplement their education with the right experiences as well as being open to drawing people in from other industries. So Absolutely. that becomes a, a two-way conversation, right? It, you you posed a great challenge of how do we make sure that we as a sport industry don't lose our top talent to other industries? I would you know go back to our, our earlier part of the conversation and say, how do we look at these other top industries and bring top talent into sport? Yeah, you know, I, I think it it's a two-way street. Some of that's evolving quickly with the injection of private equity money and and other investment that's coming into sport that again is looking at sport as a business looking at it as an investment instead of just an industry that runs by a certain set of standards and so at the end of the day if you can create value for your organization or for you know the company that you're working for there's going to be a tremendous growth track for you within your career but i think understanding what that looks like and understanding the diverse as within that is more important today than ever before, because there's more opportunities within our industry that look differently that didn't even exist three to five years ago. And I'm excited about probably the things that will exist three to five years from now that you and I haven't even started to think about existing within the sports industry. So we all have to be students. We all have to continue to be curious and, and learn. You know, that's on, on all of us, regardless of age or stature or position within the industry. And when we do that and we help each other and we offer curiosity to each other, like I think we'll all end up in a great spot that I think we love who we work with, build great relationships, and at the end of the day, continue to encourage each other to, to look beyond what's been done before. That's awesome. You're leaving me much more optimistic about uh, uh, about those uh, those kinds of opportunities that, that are available to folks. And I, I think that's that's really, really spot on. Todd, I could continue this conversation uh, for a long time, but we both have things we need to get to, and and so do our listeners. So I'm just going to say I, I always learn so much whenever I have the opportunity to to hear from you and, and speak to you, and and today was certainly no exception. So just want to say a big thanks uh, for for joining us and and being with us. Well, back back at you, Jim. I appreciate the the friendship and the many years of being able to learn from you and and from so many others. I I enjoy these platforms because I enjoy listening to others' insights. So I feel fortunate to be able to pay that forward. Hopefully, a, a nugget from our conversation resonates with one of your listeners, and uh, would love to continue the conversation throughout the industry. Yes, absolutely. We we will do that. So thanks, Todd. And, and on behalf of Ticket Manager, I want to thank all of you for listening and watching. And please join us again for the next episode in the All Access Interview Series.